What's up everyone, it's Matt Merzik, aka MVM397 with a cool unboxing for you today. So I got this uh, from Mark Havican at Filmy's Girls. He, uh, this is one of my favorite kits of his, uh, Pebbles. And uh, if you're the Flintstones, this is what Pebbles could possibly look like after she's grown up a little bit. But anyway, uh, I saw a painted up, co uh, painted up ver copy of this at Wonderfest. And uh, when I heard he was going to do another run of them, I put my name on the list. And uh, I think I got one of the first pulls out of the second run cast, or third run, whatever run it was. Um, he sent me an email last week. He's like, hey, I'm getting ready to start pulling um, uh, kits. Do you want one? I said, sure. And he said, you'll get one of the first ones. So he lives in Houston. He ground shipped this on Monday, and I had it yesterday. So I got here within less than 24 hours doing UPS, uh, UPS ground, which is pretty amazing. So let's crack this open. Uh, one thing that's a little different, this is a one-fifth scale as opposed to one-sixth scale like uh, Stella. I think Stella's one-sixth, so she's a, it's actually quite a large kit when assembled. Um, it's really impressive when done upright. So again, this is in my someday future to-do pile once I get a few kits under my belt, uh, a few figure kits under my belt. This one's pretty daunting uh, for a beginner. There's a lot of pieces. Um, a lot of different techniques that need to go into this kit to do it justice and I just need to learn those techniques before I really try to take it on so let's see what we got so we got our usual nice box uh, hard sturdy box from Filmies Girls packaging is done very well I did briefly open this the other night but I haven't really taken anything out of the box yet and we get a nice folder with your name on it I got cast number 50 so I don't know if that means 50 in the entire series uh, or 50 in this run. My guess is it's 50 in the entire series because uh, I know that he, uh, I think he remolded the kit and then to recast it because after so many, after so many uh, castings of a mold, it, it wears out. You have to remold it. So I think this is the second molding of that of the kit. Here's an example of what it looks like painted up. Really, really cool. Just a fun subject. So basically, this is Pebbles. This is Dino and Dinah. So. <laughs> Uh, and they're raptors and uh they're tugging at her little loincloth there because she's got a a bone with some meat on it so uh just really really fun it, it tells a story just right there it's really really cool very impressive um one of the few things that i haven't gotten before and probably because there's so many parts of the packing list as far as what's in the kit so you can see what comes in the kit right here and that everything's been checked off and present for. So even though that this has been checked off um, by Mark, I will do a parts check myself because you never know. And we get our certificate of authenticity. These are really impressive. These you can almost frame these. They're really really nicely done. The printing quality is good. I like this paper stock. Um, you get a nice foil sticker to show it's an original. He puts everyone's, uh, the purchaser's name on it, he signs it, and which casting you, re you receive. So, nice touch. So, let's dive into this guy. So, again, as with all the other kits I've gotten, packing is done very well. Lots of peanuts. So, I'm going to get uh, the box that it came in to the side here so I can offload peanuts as I pull these out. And uh, I'm not worried about putting the peanuts back in because it's like any other kit. Once you unpack it, you're never going to get it back in there the same. So since I don't plan on shipping this anywhere, I don't think I don't need the pin, I don't need the peanuts in there per se. So start pulling some of these out, and we'll start digging into some some cool figure resin. And right away I can see the base. I see one of the dinosaurs, or part of the dinosaur I should say. And right on top there's a bag here with some of the feet, or with her feet I should say. So let's take a look at this first bag. And you can see get some better light on it. I always get a glare, so I'm trying to. I've got this work light, trying to make it so it's not so glary. So let's pull these out and take a look at them. So within that bag, we have a smaller bag. And within that bag, we have uh, one of uh, Pebble's hands. And it looks like we have a top and lower jaw of one of the dinosaurs. And maybe a tooth right there. So right there you can see the, the jaws, the tooth, her hand. 
I'm not going to take it out of the bag. Again, he's gone through really uh, some really nice care. And he's actually put a bubble within the hand of within the pebble's hand, so um, less chance of it breaking and shipping. Nice touch. So it, show, it shows that he just doesn't take the resin pieces and throw them in a bag. Um, one thing I noticed about figure kits at Wonderfist, a lot of times they just hand you a bag full of pieces with no packing inside. This looks like an arm? Or is this a leg? I have to look at the picture. I'm not sure exactly. Where's my picture? There it is. This would be one of the arms. Looks pretty good. A little bit of a seam line, but nothing huge. Very minimal. Nice, nice, nice. So I've come to expect pretty much uh, not flawless casting, but near flawless casting from uh, from Filmies Girls, just because um, every kit I've gotten has been phenomenal. Here's one of the boots, and this is. I mean, I, I can't find a seam line, <laughs> so. Again, nicely done. You can kind of get a hint of it within there, within the key. Nice job. Here's the other foot with the leg attached. Again, minor seam line, a little bit of sanding. Taken care of, done. The texture of the boot's fabulous. Nice texture. And let's see. Oh, here's one of the dinosaurs. Oh, here's the dinosaur without the teeth. <laughs> so it's nicely that they molded them separately, which will make painting easier. Um, this looks really cool. There's a little bit of a a step on the head, not bad. I shouldn't say it's a step; it's a seam. So that'll take some sanding and rescribing and some of the skin detail here. You can see that, but nothing big. I always I say this and I say it again: if you don't like to sand, don't work with resin. <laughs> Lots of sanding involved. Here's the other dinosaur head. His mouth was closed, so the teeth are molded in. And this kind of has a very minimal seam line on it too. Not as prominent as the other head, but still very, very nice. I love the eyes. <laughs> They're all bug-eyed like that. Just really cool. Lots of expression in the face. Here's the other arm. I love the stitching detail. The fur detail is really nice. Really cool. All right. We'll keep those out because maybe I can kind of piece a few of these together. So this kit has a lot of pieces, much more than any of the other kits I've gotten from from Filmies Girls. Here's one of the raptor claws with the the foot and the leg. Really cool. Your little hands. Really nice, nice detail. This, this kit will take a little more cleanup just because there's more parts. And the tails. Nice. This is a large kit. I think it's about 18 inches tall when it's done. That's a big kit. I'm not going to take all these out, but these are all the dinosaur piece arms and legs. Here's the hand with the, the bone and the meat. That's sculpted as a one piece, so I don't know if I'm going to hand paint that or I'll probably hand paint the bone and the meat, but. So, really no masking is required. All right, let's check out the bodies. Cool. This is one of the dinosaurs, much as the dino or Dina. There's no sex on the bottom, you can't tell. <laughs> uh, really nice. Just a hint of, again, a hint of, I mean, the seam lines are like, it's like on the Stella kit. I can see them, but I don't feel them. So, you know, even though I'm doing a nail test and I'm really not getting a sensation of having a seam line there, I bet if I throw a coat of primer on there, they'll show up ever so slightly. But um, it's pretty amazing that these are pretty much seamless kits. This one has, I can tell there's a seam there. That's what you do. You run your nail over it and if it catches, you know there's a seam. So if it looks like a seam and you run your nail over it and it doesn't catch, it's just the discoloration of the resin at that point where um, it kind of wants to ooze out of the, the mold. But looking really good. Let's see. I'm not sure which head goes to which. Nope, that doesn't go there. It goes here. So this is the one. So putty, some putty work and some uh, rescribing a detail and he'll be good to go.
And another thing, if you don't like to uh, do putty work, don't work with resin, or particularly figures, because in order for them to mold these kits, they have to cut them in pieces, and that means filling some gaps and doing some putty work. So if you don't like doing that, or you know, whatever, stay away from figures and resin. Pretty cool. Nice. All right, I'm not going to open this. This looks fairly fragile. This is, oh, this is her loincloth. It's, it's nicely bubble wrapped. I'm not going to pull it out. This looks like hair, so let's see what that looks like. Or is this the head? Again, I unwrap this, and there's a piece of bubble wrap right there in the middle. It tells me there's a hollow there. So, again, I'm not sure what this is, so I'm going to be careful when unwrapping it. Pretty sure this is their head. Yeah. Cool. So basically, he had a within the bubble wrap. He had a bubble right there to help protect the hair. Nicely done. Looks really, really good. Skin's a little rough up in here. A little sanding. No big deal. There looks good. And one thing I can really appreciate on these kit is that um, the caster really thought out the molding process. Because, like on the hair, um, the way he casted it is he put the seam right. I have to look real hard, but it's there. It's kind of like right here. It follows the texture of the hair. So here, okay, it goes right here. It goes across this way. And then comes around. So right in here, they'll be have to. You can see that a little exact then if we'll take care of it. But it's not. It's like it's it's in a place that makes it easy to clean up. So that's a sign of a good caster. They're, they think out their molds and they try to make it as easy on the builder as possible. <clears throat> it's got to be her, her torso, it's the biggest chunk in there, other than the base right here. Again, it's the bubble wrap. Exactly to that. Slice it open. And um, in my opinion, the price of these kits are very, very reasonable for what you get. Um, I know one thing I noticed again at Wonderfest is that these kits are relatively inexpensive, and I say that because I build Mecca. Mega kits are crazy expensive because there's so many pieces. So if I can find a really nice kit for under 100 bucks, I'm like, score. Now these are more than that, but look what you get. I mean, you get this awesomely detailed figure. Molding is really, really slick. Um, again, there's a, I can see the seam on her leg here, but I don't feel one. And again, the, the seam is like placed really well. Skin's going to need a little sanding, but... That's to be expected. So let's see how the head fits on there. So here's the neckline. I'm curious to know how that is hidden. So you look under the chin there. And they'll do some putty work in there. But not bad. I mean, it's really just one side because you can't see anything from the back. I mean, that's a nat that would be there naturally anyway. And I think there's more hair. Yeah, there's another piece of hair that goes on here, and I think it's right here. So let's open that up and see how that fits in there. There may be more than one piece, I don't know. Let's take a look. Yeah, there's a couple pieces in here. I can feel them kind of rattling around. I guess there's two. Oh, so they're the pigtails. So yeah, so that kind of goes, I mean, it's freaking cool. It's awesome. <laughs> I love this. I'm not sure. Let's see. I'm not sure how they, if they have these in the right spot or not. Yeah, I do. Look, according to the picture, I do. There are keys. I'm not going to force it because I'm not sure exactly how they're supposed to go in. But it looks like that's going to need a little clean out inside there because... There's a little sludge in here, and I'm not being able to get this in there, but it's no big deal. But it does go in like that. 
it has to be pinned anyway because that that tab is not strong enough to hold that but anyway we're going to take that out so i don't break it so her torso right there is the length of my forearm so that's probably eight inches right there and then here's the big chunk of the base the base is cool <laughs> basically look like a rock formation it's solid super super cool uh, let's see where are her legs let's see how those legs key into here what are they do with them there they are there's one and there's two okay so basically she's support her weight supported by her um, her right foot of course, this is not going to stand up because I mean, this is so so impressive. I'm not even sure if I'm getting it in camera. Probably not. But anyway, that key's in there very nicely. A little bit of a tiny gap. You could almost probably get away without filling that, but I think any of the uh, expert figure builders would notice that so just the tiniest tiniest little bit of putty in there and you're good to go this leg obviously needs putty because it's right on the thigh where it's bare skin but it's minimal so something like that's pretty easy i mean you really don't even need to pin it you just well it, it's a good idea to pin it pin it throw some epoxy in there and then throw some putty in there and give it a squeeze and clamp it and let that Putty squeeze out and use a route, use out. And once it's dry, just sand it down, and you're good to go. So there's Pebbles, a very impressive, another very impressive kit by Filmy's Girls and Mark Havigham. Um, I'm not sure, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, he may be sold out already. I know he had a bunch of pre orders, he had a list going. So give him a shout out if you're interested in getting this kit. Um, I think it was two, I think it was 250 or 275. I want to say 275. Shit, maybe 250. Can't remember. Anyway, well worth it. It's a, just a really, really cool subject matter. Again, classy. Just really classy, you know, pinup style figures, which I love because, like I said, I have kids and I don't want half naked girly models all over my house. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it looks cool. I'm, I'm playing with the dinosaurs real quick. My battery's almost dead, so I may lose you. But, since I still have a little bit of time, I'm going to see how this might fit in. So, you can see that. Basically, that leg sits there. This will peg into there. And the other foot, the other foot sits down the rock, but it's not pegged. That pegs into there. Super impressive. As always, thanks for watching. Check out Mark Havican and Filmy's Girl. Girls, I'll put a link down below to his Facebook page. He has a website, but it's not really a store. It just shows you what his kits are and what the finished pieces look like. I'll throw that down below too. And uh, thanks for watching as always. Matt Morozik, aka MVM397, signing off. Catch you later.